All right, KISS Army, welcome to the KISS FAQ Podcast. Thank you for giving us your time today and letting us into your head. I hope we don't do any damage. This is a KISS-related podcast by the board for the board. We hope that you enjoy. All right, welcome to episode 482 of the KISS FAQ Podcast. I'm your host, Julian Gill, admin on the board. Actually, no, these days I'm Julianne on the board, but uh, whatever. Um, got Daniel Wee's staying up late again. Hi there. And Marcus Almighty. Greetings. Lonnie made it this week. Round of applause for Lonnie. Yeah. I'm here and on All time. Right. Unbelievable. Yep. And, of course, the voice of reason, 69th Blizzard. And so far, we've got a really nice uh, mix of guests on the on the chat window. Thank you for joining us live, everyone. We've got Wales, the mighty Welsh. Um, how green was my valley? Hello from Dublin, even greener on that side of the Irish Sea. We've got folks from Nagoya. I'm not sure if it's early or late there, so I'm off. And uh, North Carolina, and who knows what else from wherever you are tuning in thank you for giving us your ears this week's topic is going to be alive and kicking it's a topic from the board but before we get into that anyone had any purchases got any news or anything else you want to talk about before i monologue again i think everyone bought the same yes. stuff this week <laughs> yeah so. i bought Woo! this yeah mine's mine slightly used it's got a lot of red ink in it Eric's Dal Holland S missing. Yeah. I, I, I gotta say though, uh that this book sucks is, is fantastic. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I gotta wow. say, honestly, I, I haven't been that excited about reading a book since I had the elder book there and the the solo ones. I mean the solo one I still read to this day. I still leaf through it every once in a well, while. You haven't finished it yet? It was that <clears throat> thick. <laughs> It, it, it's 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 great and this this right away like it started off it tickled my fancy right off the bat with the whole contract talk at the beginning that they did and all that i i love those kind of little bits of uh information that, and uh, i'll be i'll be appearing on podcast rock city on sunday at 4 p.m uh I think it's 4 p.m. Eastern. Check out the Podcast Rock City site for information of when I'm appearing because I don't know off the top of my head. And hopefully I'll get to talk about some of the details of the book on there. I'm going to be doing very, very limited promo on this. Uh, again, it's not mass market as such. It's limited availability. It won't be for available forever. But Mark just hit on why it exists. And that is simply because of Odyssey and the work um, that had gone into that book left a lot of unanswered questions about the beginning of the elder cycle that once i started going back through all the memos and documents that surfaced after that book was basically done it kind of tended to need an answer about 1980 um so and you know getting a hold of the 1980 contracts also meant that there was a reason to tell the, or try and tell the story so i've heard a couple of uh, print issues in it um there are like three lines that are chopped in half. You can still read them. And that's actually in the manuscript for some odd reason that popped up. So my apologies for that. And obviously to the Swayze for Eric Stalhallen. <laughs> missed the S in two places. I, I was told that I'd spelt Scandinavian wrong as well, but I couldn't find that. Um, oh, my Lord. Yeah. Well, not Scandinavia, Scandinavium. Um, yeah. So. Again, when you're doing all this on your own, shit unfortunately does happen. Even though you've got copy editors, proofers, uh, everyone goes blind in the end going through it. So for everyone who has you know, picked up a copy, I very much appreciate your support. Without you, these projects don't exist. Remember, Demons of Rock have their next issue um, going to be going on sale later this month. You guys want publications like this? Well, they exist because of you. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart for your continued support you guys yes, you, julian real fast i know you don't want to toot your own horn but 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 i think uh, it's cool that you're on podcast rock city doing an interview but i would love to do an interview with with you guys when we've read the book um maybe julian you, you don't even have to be part of it if you don't want to but but comment on it and discuss it would be a great i mean it feels kind of strange if we don't have an episode on your book exactly. and we have the kiss faq podcast we have to do I, something on it what do you say julian i don't know i'm uncomfortable with the idea of being yeah, on a review that. show of my own I book i mean it's one thing you know to kind well, of talk about it. it 
Yeah, do it without me. Yeah, Even I mean, better. Well, on us for just do it. Just go, yeah. just go live, so that you. I don't want to edit it. Just, just go, go live. Go, go, li go live, go live, and do a re review on it if you want, because then sure. you can speak your minds about things that you like, things that you don't like. Because there's going to be something in there that people don't like. There's going to be people who don't like the design. There's going to be people who don't like the layout, or there's going to be people who don't get the idea behind the translations. If you don't like the translations, don't ever read any of the Jap Japanese lyrics from the seventies. <laughs> oh God, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but, but you We've know, giggled the book about them has, for years. Yeah, the book has done fantastic here in, over in Sweden. It, it actually entered the top ten on Amazon Sweden, and uh, that's for real not, books as well, wasn't it? Yeah, for real books. Yeah, for Just every genre, books. every genre. I think it went <laughs> to number amazing. seven, six or seven, something like that, and wow. number one in the rock category, of course. So that's great news. But you know, in yes. Sweden, there's a lot of hard rock people. Rock is still big over here. Guilty as That's charged. Good. You're damn right. Yep. I know who that is. Um, yeah. So, <clears throat> again, it's uh, maskhysteria.com if you're interested. If you already got it, thank you. I'm looking forward to review shows, you know, just to hear what did work. Um, let's move on rapidly for Chuck. Thank you for the reminder of what time I'll be. I'll need to check that out. Um, the topic today comes from the FAQ. Again, we get a lot of our topics there. And it's Roland Rockover. I love that name. Um, who came up with the, the idea, combine in a live album from the last three Kiss Studio albums. So uh, Psycho Circus, Sonic Boom, and Monster. Um, oh, shit, we just lost half our viewers. Oh, well, we'll continue. Um, so the concept is combined into live with 15 songs from the last three Kiss Studio albums, according to the three studio albums, one live album tradition. So just like a live follow three studios and a live two follow three studios do the same. But the caveat is you have to choose five songs from each album and you're allowed bonus tracks. Um, from those albums so right here right now and in your face you're not al allowed anything from jigoku retsuden you're definitely not allowed to have picked don't touch my ascot mark <laughs> um uh -oh. no and and can you weren't allowed to choose samurai son uh so five songs not. from each of these albums how did you each of you approach this topic lonnie you weren't here last week let's start with you well it this was difficult. This was more difficult than I thought it would be. Um, I, I approached it with beer. Well, that. And um, <laughs> I, I approached it with, well, what song would lead off? I guess I just approached it with what, what would be the best lead off song. And to me, it was very obvious what the lead off yeah. song should be. And we probably all, majority of us picked it. And then I thought, okay, well, what would the last song be? And that was difficult. That 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 was a little difficult. And I said, okay, well, what song would 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 a guitar solo work with? What song would a drum solo work with? What song would blood spitting work with? And I kind of kind of went from there, and it's like, okay, now where am I at as far as five songs from each album go? And I'll tell you, I didn't realize how poorly Psycho Circus has aged with me. It was Oof. extremely difficult for me. And I don't know about you guys, if, if there was... Well, when you guys go... Tell me, too, guys, I mean, wh which album was the most difficult for you to, to pick five songs from? For me, it was Psycho Circus, and it was, it was a challenge. And I had the... Almost felt like I was settling, like, okay, I, I guess this has to go on there. It was tough. Mark. Well, all all of them, all of them was tough to pick from. <laughs> wow, because I mean, I mean, no come on. I mean, Psycho Circus is not good. I mean, I, I'd say Sonic Boom was a little easier than Psycho Circus to pick some the some more stronger songs, but Monster was like God, like that was really tough to to pick those five. But like you said, I, I kind of did it the same way as you, like you know, picked out the 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 closer, the opener. What would be the first song of the encore? What would they close the first set with? Uh, what would be a fire song? What would be a blood song? What would be the guitar solo and drum solo? And once I kind of picked out those ones, then I was just kind of filling the rest of it with other songs. So it became a little bit easier once that sort of blueprint was picked out like that. But uh, it was still it was still tough because 
you know, you're so used to over the years, you know, having certain songs that Gene would do the blood thing to, or doing the flying up to the rafter rafters bit too, or you know, the, what what song would the guitar solo be with? There's always there's always one or two that they've used throughout the years, you know, and there hasn't been many, like, you know, you, you never hear somebody say, you know, today we're going to do talk to me for the guitar solo song. Like, that just never happens. Right. So you're so used to it. That's what makes it more difficult to kind of envision a new song in that spot. Yeah. So we're going to find out if anyone has put that uh, a new song in the opening slot, because there are a couple of options from these, you know, three albums. Ken, what's your answer to Lonnie's question and then to mine? Oh, well, yeah, I'm gonna say Monster was the hardest one for me to uh, pick pick some songs from there. Uh, there are some that I do like from it, but uh, it's it's kind of tough. It was tougher than Psycho Circus for me. Um, as far as the format, uh, I kind of went with the format of my you know my favorite live album, which is Alive Two. So I kept that with the first you know three sides live and one side uh studio cuts <laughs> and a cover actually it's one's a cover on on the side so that's how i approached it all right daniel do we need solos on this album because well if we do i think i can put the, put them in but i think it is a yeah. kiss album right yeah 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 <clears throat> but um, both al both alive had solos yeah, yeah. Didn't really care for for uh, the Peter Chris drums. All of course was pretty cool, but other than that, they had to edit them down a bit. Like Gene's blood uh, vomiting thing there was kind of shortened on the album. But I can put them in. I have songs that would work for them. Uh, I have to agree a lot with Lania. I, I started with what is the best one to punch at the beginning, much like an album. You know, a Kiss album needs that one two punch mm -hmm. and i used uh, you know uh, the the concerts i attended a few weeks back as a template what did i like <clears throat> when did i go to the loo when did <laughs> and uh, <laughs> actually i i'm at that age so i needed to go to the loo that was the first time damn it i me, like me, in the middle of the set, I felt I, I, can't, I can't take it anymore. So I, I waited for Eric Singer's drum solo, and then I went to, to the loo. So I, I missed a bit, a bit of that. But uh, but the Eric, hardest Eric, um, Eric Singer's hand drying, not his drum yeah. solo. He spends more time yeah. drying his hands. Yeah, I don't know what that is all about, but he, he can <laughs> he, he could do something more exciting. But whatever, uh, and uh, the album that was the hardest to find five songs that could work live for me was uh, Monster. I think that was the hardest one. Hmm. Okay. Well, my answer to Lonnie's question is I didn't have any problem with any of the albums. None of them were difficult for me. I started off with this, again, looking at the front end of the show, and then I just threw, I basically threw all three albums into Winamp, which I still use. I'm oh playing. my lord! Wow, Winamp! Winamp! Win that's like old stuff. <laughs> yes, that's just so yeah. easy yeah. to oh, use. I just I yeah. hate <laughs> iTunes as a player and VLC. Yeah. I just can't adapt to it. I'm I'm really bad. You wonder why I can't learn InDesign. Um, so then I just started moving songs around. It was easy, you know. I don't like that song. Don't like that song. Delete, delete, delete. How many do I have from each? Oh, I've got six from PC. You know, that's too many. Which one do I want to get rid of? Okay, so I'm not going to open the live one. show with "I Finally Found My Way to You." Um, so, you know, it it really kind of worked out more about which songs I want to hear live the most from those albums yeah. rather than what is yeah. really a, a very small subset of Sonic Boom in particular that we got to hear live and you know we, we did mm. finally hear a, an extra one from Psycho Circus so we have an idea of what I Pledge Allegiance would have been like live um, and the Monster of course had a very good sampling um, yeah, the Welshman thinks I'm mad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's how I didn't I have that problem. Um, no. That's how I approach it. Let's start this off with your first three songs and your reasoning behind how you start the show. Mark, I'm going to start with you on this, and then we'll go to Lonnie. Well, um, like Lonnie said, I think everybody's going to pretty much have probably the same opener, uh, which for me was obviously Psycho Circus. I just can't imagine out of what we had 
any other song really starting it. And for strategic reasons, I mean, there's a couple of them people might think, you know, well, you could have did this or that, but I kind of strategically play some of those other possible ones in other sections. Um, and like Daniel said, a good one to punch. I thought to myself, what could be a good song to go after Psycho Circus? And to me, it was a song that they opened a tour with prior, which was Modern Day Delilah. So I put that second uh, on there. So I thought that was a good one to combination. And then uh, I decided to put in a song in the third spot uh, to keep up the pace a bit. But, you know, it wasn't, I don't think it's as hard or impactful as the first two songs but i still think it's a good song to keep the crowd into it and that's into the void uh i thought that it was a good song to put in there and you know since we're this is going to be a completely unrealistic live album from kiss you know why not put in a song like that and have you know T tommy sing you know early on in the set you're evil i like it all right so recap all three just list them off uh, psycho circus opening Modern Day Delilah second and Into the Void third. All right, Lonnie. So I want, and we're all probably going to say the same thing again. I want Psycho Circus to start. It's of the three, of the three albums. I mean, I, there's not a better. I mean, there's not. I mean, Kiss opens with the song, in not that far distant history. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it is a great opener. So so that was easy, and then. I'd like to get a Gene song in there right away after a Paul song. So I went with uh, I went with Wall of Sound as the second one. Hmm. Um, straight into that with the screeching guitar right out of Psycho Circus and the Wall of Sound. I thought that might be kind of cool and get a Gene song in there with some energy early in the set. And then I went back to Psycho Circus with Never Enough. Pretty high energy song early in the set list. Kind of keep things keep things moving, keep the crowd going type thing. Nice. All right, list them off. <laughs> so Psycho Circus, Wall of Sound, Never Enough. All right, Daniel, what you got? And Rock and Roll Rebel, I like yours, by the way. Yeah, the one-two punch for me was exactly what Mark mentioned, the same. Psycho Circus, of course, even the lyrics, uh, are, they are just made to be the first song in the set. So Psycho Circus, followed by Modern Day Delilah. Uh, and then uh, I had a hard time finding songs of that quality. I mean, those two songs, to me, are really good songs. Could be on any album. So I like both those songs. So then as a third song, I need to put Gene on the mic. You know, he needs to get a song. And then I actually chose Wall of Sound, like I think it was Lonnie who, who mentioned Wall of Sound as a, a pretty good Gene song. It was actually a bit hard for me to find a lot of Gene songs that I thought would work live. But Wall of Sound is a pretty good song. So to list them, Psycho Circus, Modern Day Delilah, and Wall of Sound. So what he said nice uh just one one thing i don't mean to be a nitpicker but yep. lonnie did you say did you say that never enough was from psycho circus it's actually from yes. sonic boom isn't it oh sure as hell is well we're live mark and uh sometimes <laughs> sorry, we sorry. Have, sometimes <laughs> we have verbal typos okay my, my apologies my friend. Jeez. so i was wondering I, if i made an error so yeah, and I'm going to go next, uh, since uh, Daniel talked about having a problem finding Gene songs for live. That was not my problem. I had way too many Gene songs today. There's um, never too many Gene songs. Because I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of thinking in mind about Paul and 2023, you know, or 20, even 2013, yeah. after the third one of these albums had come out, you know, the, the state of his voice. Um, so... Again, I went Psycho Circus. It was only between Psycho Circus and Modern Day Delilah for me because I believe both have opened. So I didn't think that, you know, putting anything else in there would work or feel comfortable. So I went Psycho. It's it's actually aged probably one of the best of a lot of the Psycho Circus songs, and it's still in the set. So Paul Stanley clearly thinks it's a classic, and I'm not going to argue with Paul Stanley. Um, mm. Next up is another Paul song. I'm coming out with Power and Punch as much as, as, much as, 
as much as possible. So uh, <laughs> Heller Hallelujah is up next. Mm. Oh, no. Um, yeah, no, I want power out, out of the gate. We're going to boom, boom. You got to leave Absolutely. something. Yeah, I do. That's next. Wall of sound. So yeah. we're, we then flip into Gene. And again, a pretty up-tempo, maintaining the up-tempo. So they're coming out. And they're hitting the ground running. And it's not that much different than, say, Psycho Circus, Modern Day Delilah, and Wall of Sound. You know, there's not a lot of difference between Modern Day and Hell or Hallelujah, stylistically. So, Ken, too many Gene songs? Was that a problem for you? No. <laughs> it's never. Um, so, I started, it's on the same as you guys, pretty much. Uh, Psycho Circus uh, leads off my side one. And uh, then it goes into Hot and Cold by Gene. Uh, I think it's more like a, you know, a fun song uh, to have in there as the second one. And then number three, I choose Modern Day Delilah. So a lot of us have that in the top three or the first three songs. And that one's another great one to uh, continue the concert. So those are my three. Yeah, list them, because I, I lost track. I was reading comments. Psycho Circus, Hot and Cold, and Modern Day Delilah. All right, Daniel, take us into the next section of your set, please. I think one of the biggest uh, strengths of, of these albums is that uh, you have all members singing. So I've tried to include songs from, from Ace. No, not Ace. Tommy and... Oops. Uh, <laughs> oops. <laughs> and Eric, of course. Uh, because if you look at the 80s, you didn't get a lot of that. So I think that was a cool thing they did through the, the at least the two final albums. So my number four song is a Thomas song, When Lightning Strikes. And then we move on to Raise Your Glasses. I know some of you have a hard time listening to that song, but I, I think it could work live pretty good. And uh, then I move on to the Eric Singer song from Sonic Boom, All for the Glory, which I feel is a pretty good song. And I think they played it at the beginning, maybe on the cruise and a few concerts in South America, if I'm not miss. Yep. Uh, yep. Okay. So, and I like that one, uh, and I like Eric's voice, Eric's voice, and, and Tom is a great singer as well. So, then after the first six songs, you have all members taking, you know, control of the mic and, and leading, leading the band. So I think that's kind of cool. And when I started this thing, um, I don't, I don't know who came up with this. It, 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 it must, it must be sort of a crazy guy. I have never thought of. <laughs> creating a live album of the three final albums. So I think it was a cool idea. But at first I thought this would be a terrible show to, to attend. But when I'm looking at my picks, it would be kind of cool at least once to see this concert. Mm -hmm. So to wrap to wrap it up, you have in fourth position, When Lightning Strikes, then Raise Your Glasses, and Six, All for the Glory. Nice. All right, Lonnie, you, you go next with yours. <clears throat> So, my fourth song is off of Monster with Long Way Down, Paul song. It's one of the stronger songs off of there. I had to include that on there. Um, and then kind of midway through the set, I know you guys had it as you know close to the opening. A couple of you guys did, but I put Modern Day Delilah in at five. You know, they um, on that uh, a Live Thirty Five tour. You know, they, when they first started putting it in, it was kind of midway through the set. So I kind of stuck with that. I just kind of put it in at number five. And then in my sixth position, I might just reset. And then in my sixth position, I have Within and the Fire Breathing coming after Within. So to recap, Long Way Down, Modern Day Delilah, and Within. One from... Each of the three albums, and Mark, you can fact check me on that. It is one from. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm glad. I'm glad you have "Long Way Down" in there because I, I couldn't bring myself to include that after hearing its performance. Um, but there we go, Daniel. I think I said my. You said uh, his. Did you? Did you? Uh, he did. Yeah. I'm. I'm. Yep. See what You're... happens. I'm not wearing my glasses. The other Daniel, Mark. 
Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Um, oh. Is it because we both have long hair? Or is that it? Yeah. Um, okay. So my number four is an. I, I don't know if it's going to be an oddball pick. I'll see what what how's the rest of your guys set goes. But in number four spot, I put "Yes, I Know Nobody's Perfect." I really love that yeah. song. Actually, it's one of my favorite Gene songs from that album. So I figured to let him into the set with a really good song. And my fifth song, which is the end of my side one, because I'm I'm looking at this as also like a vinyl release too. So, uh, so my end of side one is Wall of Sound, and when they hit that last fading out chord, they just continue sustaining it, and they do Gene's Fire bit at the end of Wall of Sound. Uh, that's where I did that. Uh, flip over to side B, and my sixth song, or the first song on side B, is Never Enough. I figured to start off the side with a you know pick me up kind of song again a bit and i don't mind that song so i thought that it was a believable song to put into their set list ball of sound ball of fire nice I like yes that. all right ken which uh three gene songs are you gonna continue with? yeah yeah <laughs> um all right so my fourth song is uh you kind of might think it's a little strange but uh i'm you i'm choosing we are one as the fourth song but i wanted more crunchy kind of guitar going on on that one this is all you know speculation <laughs> yeah i'm just uh, putting a reminder trying up. to make it heavy chords just, just so you know where you stand we are one yeah yeah we are one and then i follow that with hell or hallelujah and then i go to uh not ace but tommy <laughs> uh, uh, out of this world is the third song um, which is the sixth song actually um, and for that song Tommy's going to have an extended guitar solo on that and he's going to shoot lasers out of his guitar lasers. Over, over the crowd where they have these large boxes at the top these boxes or whatever or like <laughs> planets and he's going to hit the planet and it's going to Exploded, and these silver and black Kiss Army sponges are going to fall down to the crowd. As In the souvenir. middle of the show? In the middle of the show. Wow. Right. So people riot? can start throwing them at the band in the middle so of the show. So they can fight over them and have they'll a big they can riot. Throw it at the band. They'll be on eBay before the show's over, and there'll be blood <laughs> and teeth in the aisles. Exactly. But that's that's what's going to happen with them. I Tommy. guess that's better than having him shoot a little Vinnie doll and having pinwheels fall out of it. <laughs> yeah. 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 A vignata. There you, there you go. go. Oh, very nice. Very All nice. right. So let's see what you those, did there. List those songs out. We are one. Hell or hallelujah. And out of this world. All right. So it, it gets, <laughs> it gets a little bit tougher now to sequence this for me, but I had, we are one next. Did you really? All, yeah, I want all, I want all of them singing. I think wow. that would be really cool live, um, especially like you said with a, some more crunchy guitar. And yeah. then we go in to raise your glasses. Mm. And again, I don't care I, what anyone says. I still think that was the biggest mistake of the Psycho Circus tour, going out with 3D glasses and not playing raise your glasses. I mean, for fun's yeah, really. sake. Put on your glasses. You know, in, instead you have Paul doing, well, this is where you need to put on your glasses and showing people how to put on their glasses. They could have, and I wonder if they rehearsed uh, it. I don't know. No no idea on that one. So, uh, yes, and then. don't know how to put on glasses. And then Russian roulette. Mm, wow. Nice. That's a good thing. I, again, I found myself tending towards Gene songs on this. And I, I'll put a, a Spotify playlist for for my playlist up for folks. Uh, hopefully you mm. guys will do the same for yours. Um, but again, once I had this in Winamp, I actually left it on rotate. <laughs> Winamp. God. Hey, don't knock it. It works. <laughs> on, on your, on your works. Windows 95 computer? Talking about yeah. the Stone Age. Oh, wow. <laughs> it plays flax. Back to what? the Stone Age. Exactly. Back to Stone Age. Well, actually, I didn't pick that one. All right, Lonnie, take us into <laughs> your next section. So, after the <laughs> fire breathing within, we're going to go into Out of This World. Yeah. Both the Tommy song and the guitar solo following that. And then coming out of the guitar solo, we're going to stick with Monster. 
and do hell or hallelujah in the middle of the, in the middle of the show, right? Smack in the middle. And then we've had Tommy sing a song. We've had Paul sing a song. It's time for Gene to sing one. And we're going to go with hot and cold off of Sonic Boom. That's the center appearance of hot and cold nice. on this conversation. I know Ken did it. Ken did it earlier. I was, yeah, I, I like hot and cold. I think it's, I think it's underrated it's song, song off of mm -hmm. Sonic Boom. So out of this world with the guitar solo, Heller Hallelujah. And Heller Hallelujah is like in the eighth position. So it's kind of like the start of the second record, if you, or the, sec, the next yeah, the eyes, yeah, You know what I mean? It's like flipping the record over. They have yeah. seven songs and then eight songs in the next. The seven songs with the guitar solo kind of spanning out the first record and then flipping it over and start with Heller Hallelujah. Kind of like the I Stole Your Love. Wait a minute, wait. Did, 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 you, did you just say seven songs aside? You're doing CDs. That, Second that's, CD. That's, this oh, is, this okay, is okay. twenty. Yeah, come okay. on, Mark. I was gonna say that's gonna be some compressing there. A little oh, bit, man, you know? <laughs> Mark, get off my ass today. Let's <laughs> <laughs> pick on Lonnie. Dude. <laughs> Not here last week. Oh, <laughs> so hello, hi, Leah. Hot and cold. I'm sorry. Out of this world. Hello, hi, Leah. Hot and cold. Okay. I'm going to go to Ken and make Mark wait now. Go sit in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Where did I leave off? I left on, at, out of this world. So my next pick after that is uh, I Pledge Allegiance to the State of Rock and Roll. Paul, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after that, I follow, follow it with Yes, I Know, with Gene singing. Oh, cool. And then I follow that with Long Way Down, Paul. Uh -huh. So those are the three. I Pledge down. Allegiance, Yes, I Know, and Long Way Down. Any any gimmicks in that set? No gimmicks. The gimmicks are coming. I'm going to have oh. some more gimmicks. You're going to do them all in one song, aren't you? All right, Daniel. No. Yeah, I think I'm the only one. I'm actually um, a bit um, curious what the last song will be for you guys because most of you have spent mm. all the good ones already. So, nah. so I, I thought you would pick like We Are One as the final song or something, but mm. most of you have, have picked Hello. that one. And uh, mm. I, I will see. But in seventh, seventh place for me, I think I'm the only one who picked this one since I watched the show you did on Monster. This song was ridiculed. But if you... <laughs> Playing a little bit faster. It has a cool beginning. Paul and Jean take turns in this song, which I think is a strength that they used, you know, through the two final albums, uh, which they had forgotten about through the 80s uh, and the 90s. Uh, so um, I think this was a pretty cool song. The lyrics are hilariously bad. But I really don't care about them. So in seventh place, I have Take Me Down Below. Ooh, and I think I'm the only one picking that one. But, but, but I love yeah. the interaction between Gene and Paul. And I think it's actually a pretty good song if you speed it up a little bit. And if you, you don't listen to the lyrics that lot. You, you, you know, I'm, I'm squeezed. So I, I really don't understand. What don't listen about. to the lyrics. <laughs> no. And in eighth place, I had to pick a Gene song. You had to. And I, yeah. And I guess this is my favorite Gene song off of these albums, and it's Journey of a Thousand Years. And um, if we need a fire breathing act somewhere, I, I, I think I'd put it after Journey of a Thousand Years. Uh, I think it's a really good song, and I love the way Gene sings this one. And number nine for me is I Pledge Allegiance. Didn't they do that one in Australia? Yeah, that's and I think it was pretty in your cool. Face shows, I think. I think it was. It sounded pretty cool live, and uh, so seven, take me down below. Eight, journey of a thousand years, and not nine. I pledge allegiance to the state of rock and roll. You see, while I, I I'm really doubtful anyone else picked take me down below. I'll yeah, yeah, I wrong. just said that. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but it would be fun because I could just imagine Gene sitting there going oh yeah like he does you need one sex song in the set at least because that's the only one i can find you gyrate so much he'd have his backbone slip. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. I, I guess 
Paul look at his finger could finally have some context. All right. Mark. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So interesting picks. A bottom of press. Especially the journey of a thousand years. I, 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 I'm trying to envision how you do the fire breathing with that one, but uh, I'll take your word for it. Uh, but let's go uh, to uh, side. Like I said, side B, I started with never enough. That was my last one. So continuing from that, my uh, sixth, seventh song is Say Yeah. I can just already imagine them doing that. Mm -hmm. They do it. They've done it already so many times anyway. So why not keep that in there? And to end my side B will be Out of This World with, of course, a long Tommy solo. Since we have so much space available left on side B, might as well put this full guitar solo in there. Not one of these edited versions like on a live to boo that they edited of that. And then to start off uh, side C of the album uh, will be Stand. Uh, like I said, it was difficult after a while to pick some songs because they become increasingly more and more shit as you go through them. So, but I thought that stand was decent enough to put in here. Uh, it's not a great song, but I, I could see that I could see it go over better live than it does on album. Yeah. So, uh, it was say yeah, out of this world with Tommy's long guitar solo, unedited, and sit and stand after that. Has Tommy ever done a long guitar solo? He really should. That'd be interesting. All right. Uh, rattle off that list. One more time. I said, um, say yeah, then out of this world with Tommy's solo, and then stand. Okay. All right. So here's where things get rough. <laughs> out of this world. We're, we're throwing Tommy out there and he's going to do his solo at the end of that and then segue into singing into the void. So, Oh, there you go. Perfect. Um, yeah. We're, we're, we're going to do a double punch and a middle finger from Tommy uh, there. And Good. then, then we're going into the devil is me. And that's going to be Gene's God of thunder song for this. Hmm. Um, he's going to do his blood spewing and after his final dribble up into the rafters so that he can command the audience from above, reminding them that the devil is him. And then he comes down and flambe, fireball. So you're going to get all of Gene stick in a song, which I would really like to hear live because I think it, it's slow but it's so much better than the other slow song in these albums within. So mm. devil is me. Mm. All right. Next batch. Ken. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're going to leave off. Uh, I left with I pledge allegiance. So uh, my next song, continuing side two, because I have five songs per side. Um, yes, I know by uh, Gene and follow. No, I did these already, didn't I? I don't remember. I think you mentioned <laughs> Yes, I Know, but I, th I thought number that that 10. was early. You're on number 10. Yeah. Oh, 10. One, two, three, four. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I'll, I guess I did a long way down, too. Yep. Yeah. So, the all right. Kiss fans wouldn't notice. I know. It doesn't matter. The I, math oh, is... I, my, I don't have these numbered. Uh, so, which is a mistake, all right. to be honest. But. Long way down. All right. So, uh, all right. So, here's the order then. Um, all for the glory, and is next, or my next song, and that has Eric's drum solo, and it also has Eric with exploding drumsticks. Hopefully, it doesn't but explode his hand. It's though. not explode it in his hand. It's a. Ah! It's, yeah, you're, it's, you're it's a trick. Steal, you're going to steal another. <laughs> it's an illusion. It's an illusion. So what he does is he he throws it, and it's going to go one to the well, left, and it's going to hit in this like. <laughs> it's going to hit this like. What and all the effects? Like, yeah, it's going to go into this uh, the left side, and he's going to hit something. I don't know what the object will be, and it's going to <laughs> explode at that point. And then he's going to do one on the right, and then he'll do one actually. Up towards the rafters and straight, and they'll have an explosion up there with a you, with a false a false rig falling down, kind of hanging there, like it, you know, damaged it. All right, Didn't so that's you set that. up bazooka. 
Mm -hmm. He did have a bazooka. That's right. Yeah. 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 So this is an upgrade from that. All right. Uh, next, after All for the Glory, is Back to the Stone Age. Oh, come on. That's awful. <laughs> what? <laughs> You're the only one. I hate what? That song. Back to the Back to the Stone Age. No, it's going to be okay. It's going to be, and what because we're going to make Gene, uh, instead of going up to the rafters, we're going to make him fly out to the crowd like Paul usually does. But there's going to be out there is going to be these huge, this huge kind of boulders stage. <laughs> yeah, the gonna, uh, boulders like the, <laughs> the Stone Age, right? So these big boulders out there, he's going to be on top of that. He's going to have and like, a, and like a club for him because he's a. He's going to be circled. Yeah, he's the going to be circled with a flamestone, and he wears a leopard right. skin, and then he goes. And hits it's yeah, yeah Sorry, it's going Ken, to be circled. I think, and then I, I, I think if he's got to sing that song, he's going to the ladies' room instead. <laughs> and it's going to be you know surrounded by torches oh. and whatnot. The look of it all, but that's what's going on. With, he, he made blow fire at that time. You know, fire. all those memes with Gene. Now I see a picture of Gene rolling around in that, you know, that Flintstones car with the steel. Well, he's, yeah. run, no. he's, run, he's running in order to make the, the vehicle move. Running in those boots. Yeah, he can do that during that song. It will be yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's funny. But anyway, hey, you know, just trying to give a show, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There you go. Uh, all right, off a guy said back to Stone Age, and then followed by Never Enough. Paul. Okay. Wow. Lonnie, how are you gonna follow that? I, no. I don't know. That's that's very <laughs> unique. I was not expecting that. I was not expecting anyone. I want to do the obvious. To, I wasn't expecting anyone to say back to the Stone Age. <laughs> Awful. <laughs> so my 10, 11, 12 is Yes, I know off of Sonic Boom. I love Yes, I know. It's one of the better songs on that album. So I had to put mm -hmm. that in there. Followed by, um, I had the same thought Julian did, but The Devil Is Me with the blood drooling prior to The Devil Is Me and Gene going up to the rafters and singing The Devil Is Me from the top of the stage. I think it makes a lot of sense. And then we're, we're going to have a, Member of the family come out and Ace Frehley is going to come out and do Into the Voids. Oh, oh, wow! Good luck with that. Yeah, yeah I know. Good luck with that. But you got a hard it. time. I had a hard time leaving Into the Void. Would if yeah, if I have to choose, if I had to choose five songs off of Psycho Circus, I couldn't not put Into the Void as one of because in your it face, was, it was pretty bleak trying to find five. And afterwards, songs he's going to shoot Circus. rockets at Tommy Thayer. Sure, why not? <laughs> that would be a cool battle <laughs> yeah so All to right. recap yes I know the devil is me and into the void I like that, that you brought a member of the family out I hmm. deliberately, <laughs> deliberately didn't alright Daniel uh, number 10 is another Timotheyer Tom Thayer song <laughs> I, I, the lisping sound we don't have that in Swedish I, I struggle with it you know, out of this world uh, pretty good song, and of course he would do his uh, guitar solo following in this one. And then no one has, I don't think anyone has picked this one either. It's Poison. No, I mean Dreamin'. Uh, I'm 18. Mm. You know, Alice Cooper right. uh, ripoff. Mm. I'm 18. Um, I, I really like Dreamin'. I think it's, it sounds great, until I understood that it was pretty similar to I'm 18. But, you know, what the heck. And then uh, I needed a Gene song because it was uh, some time since Gene's, Gene got a lead vocal. So I picked my favorite Gene song off of these albums, and it's actually Russian Roulette. Hmm. I don't know what it is about it, but but uh, first time I heard it, I really liked it, and it's, uh, it stood the test of time. So Russian Roulette with Gene. So Out of This World, Dreaming, and Russian Roulette. Tommy, Paul, Gene. All right, Mark. I'm sorry. I seem to be making you wait until the last each round. That's okay. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, so my what's this? What's this now? This is like nine? No, ten. Oh, nine, oh, oh. Were you harassing yeah. Ken because no, he lost his place? I, no, I'm just making sure. Okay. Uh, so okay. <laughs> I have the second song on side hmm. C. Okay, is within, which has Gene's blood and flying to the rafters bit there for that. 
uh, followed by the end of side C, which is all for the love of rock and roll with Eric singing and doing his drum solo in there. So I'm keeping B and C only three songs aside so that they can include longer of the solos in there. I really don't like when they trim this kind of stuff on the record, either put it on or don't put it on. So uh, in the start of side D is actually the last song of the set. Yeah. Okay. And the last song of the set that I picked is Freak. It's a song I don't think anybody else probably picked on here, but I figured I was going to pick an oddball song to end the song, to, to, end, the, to end the set. Yeah. And one that I think that if they would have given it a bit more push and you know actually made a good video for it or something, it could have been a song that maybe would have did a lot better for the record than Hell or Hallelujah, in my opinion. Ah, I don't know about Going that. Going back quite a few minutes... Uh... One of our audience members, Rock and Roll Rebel, had uh, pegged Freak. So there we go. Yeah, that's the first time that one's come up. All right. So I've got to try. Where am I? Before anyone mocks me for not being ready. Uh, all for the glory. I, I think that's I'm, – I'm, I'm not surprised that so many of us have picked that. And it's going to be followed by Eric's uh, drum solo. Then we're going to, to Modern Day Delilah and Paul because we're going to start amping it up as we come to the end of the set. And I'm going to do something different. Yes, I know. But mm -hmm. just like Gene used to do in the 80s with Young and Wasted, Eric's going to sing it. Mm. Oh, okay. Because I think Gene wants a, a little bit more of a break, but he also wants one of his songs. So he wants his cookies <laughs> and his milk. So therefore, <laughs> we're going to have him do it. All right, Mark. Lead us off into the next round. The okay. Final round. So this final yeah. round is going to be controversial, I think, for a few reasons. Maybe it's not. Hard. But... It's hard. It's hard to put, put in the last songs. But I think I, I think that I'm I'm confident in my final three okay. here. Okay. So the, the opening of the encore for me, and this is a good point that Daniel brought up earlier about not trying to blow your load early with all the good songs in this set and to keep something for later, right? So. Hell or Hallelujah is the opening for the encore for me. I think that that is a perfect spot for that song because it's a strong song and you want to start the encore with that. And now for the song after that, I have to now officially tender my resignation to the podcast because I'm picking, I finally found my way to have Eric come out and sing it by himself oh on the stool with the full <laughs> Wait, backing Eric. track. Yeah, let him come and sing it. Oh, man. Oh, you're gonna, you're, no. you're gonna have to. You're gonna have another drummer steal another Peter. Song. Yes, of course. Why not? Let him come out and say probably sing it better than Peter. Anyway, finally so. found my way. So let him I'm, come out and I'm sing the final song. You're gonna do way. nothing to keep me from you. You know. Yeah, um, let's throw that in there while we're at it. Uh, and and hey, hey, look, if you want to be historically accurate, I mean, we had Peter come out doing Beth all the time. So then, why not just come out there and let him come out and do? I mean, this is this is an album that would never happen anyway. So. Why not just put that in there? And I think the good, the best closer for this is a song that you guys, well, a couple of you have picked this song, but I have always envisioned this as the as a proper big closer, and that is Journey of a Thousand Years. I think that should be the closer of the entire show. I could see all the kind of big production at the end for it, all the explosion, blah 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 blah, stuff like that, and that would be the closing of the show. So Hell or Hallelujah starts the encore. I finally found my way with Mr. Eric Singer singing beautifully <clears> on a <throat> stool. And then Journey of a Thousand Years to end the whole set. Oh, there you go. God. Oh, my God. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just... Flabbergasted. Mark, I, I, I just... I, I don't think don't anyone know. would choose... That I song. had the balls to pick that song, people, okay? <laughs> I just don't know how to respond to this. I, 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 I wouldn't refer to it as that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Daniel, uh, give us some, give us some sanity, please. I don't know. I don't know about that, but but uh, I, <laughs> one can hope. Num number thirteen for me ends. You know the main set, and you need something to rally the crowd. And mm. the one song I found that. I thought could rally the crowd into, you know, believing in yourself, believing in rock and roll. When I watched Kiss uh, a week or two back, um, he, he said, you got to believe in something. Stand up for rock and roll. And I think that would be a good introduction to, to this song. Uh, 
All for the Love of Rock and Roll with Eric mm. Singer on vocals. And then you mm. end that song with a coda from 1983, you know, mm. that they did for Black Diamond. They started with that one in 83 in uh, uh, South America. Mm. You know what I'm talking about, the instrumental thing? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so you sing all, all for the love record all and end it with mm -hmm. that Black Diamond ripoff. <laughs> and, and and then then the main set ends. Uh, I think that would be a cool ending. And then they come back and, you know, uh, you need something to rather rally the crowd once again. And I, I like the way they did it with, if you remember, on, on the uh, uh, Revenge Tour, they used God Gave Rock and Roll to You pretty late in, in the set. A slow song that got people, you know, singing mm. and so on. So I tried to find something that was kind of similar to God Gave Rock and Roll to You because... I think the revenge era is probably one of my favorite live eras of all time when it comes to Kiss. And um, so the only one I found that could work like God gave rock and roll to you was actually Stan. I think one or two of you picked it earlier. I did. Yeah. So yeah, so so there, you will start the encore with Stan, you know, uh, singing together and you have Gene and Paul, you know, singing together, standing close to each other and it's really about them, you know. Be, being there for one and another, another. Uh, and then to end things, uh, I picked one of the probably my favorite song off of the these three albums, and it's a real rock and roller. And I think it would end things with with a bang. And it's hell or hallelujah, and you 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 end things with that one. So all for the love of rock and roll. Stand and hell or hallelujah. All right. Mark's gone mental again, apparently. <laughs> no, Mark ain't going to bullshit. He's going to tell you what he thinks. And he doesn't care if anyone agrees <clears throat> with him or not. Right, Mark? That's right. Exactly. We don't really, know really one well. That's, because that's what has Paul Stanley said all these years? Stand up for what you believe in. That's right. You know, Stand by my Go back side. to the 83 stage raps, you know, uh, and what Paul was telling kids. So what you see is yeah, what yeah. you get with Mark. Yes. I, I got to be a little more, bit more of a politician, sadly. Yeah, but there we go. a bit of a politician. <laughs> suit and tie, Julian. We talked about oh, this. Suit, you just <laughs> called me a suit and tie guy. Pull um, out my DRI album now. All right, um, Ken. All right, so I'm corporate. corporate my final three guy. songs in this whole set list is uh, Wall of Sound. Three Gene songs. Uh, no, almost. Um, the second next one is "Raise Your Glasses." This is good. Read this. And and this is Paul. Okay, this is this Paul's little point here. Paul plays using a see-through glass Ibanez. <laughs> it's a glass Ibanez. Okay. And he's going to also then he's going to be on a martini glass riser. Well, rise up in the stage. He's going to be on. A, oh <laughs> he's going to be on a martini glass playing a Ibanez that's glass or looks like glass. How much is the uh, budget for this tour? I don't know. It's, I think I don't know if they can afford it. Uh, so that's Paul's little deal there. Uh, then martini followed by glass. that means he's got to sh to, to wiggle his. Talks. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> and then the last song to end it all is Journey of a Thousand Years, which go. I thought makes total, like Mark, makes total sense. Start with Cycle Circus, end with Journey of a Thousand Years, the world, the crowd, all that stuff. So that's how I ended it. Okay. <laughs> but that does not count my. Uh, okay. I, I'm Additional sorry, I'm, songs I'm, later. But, uh, I, I'm just hung up on the uh, martini, the martini glass. glass. Yeah, I <laughs> yeah. Picture. I didn't know. What, <laughs> could have put them on top of a Corvette or something. I guess. Maybe. All right, Lonnie. <laughs> <laughs> so I ended my. Lonnie's in shock. <laughs> so I'm shock over Mark's finally found my way to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that, that <laughs> <laughs> didn't see that one coming. <laughs> I ended my set with 
I pledge allegiance to the state of rock and yeah, roll. That's I think a good that one. Could, I think that you know to get you fired up type mm. song, kind of oh, get yeah. the crowd get the crowd back into it at the end, get the crowd kind of singing along with you know kiss what they stand up for what you believe in type thing. And then to come out for the encore, two songs for the encore. The first one, kind of bring it down a notch for the first song, and that's We Are One. You, you kind of get the crowd singing along. You kind of have like, you know, We Are You, you know, type thing. Kind of, kind of again, kind of a rally thing, but kind of a, but slower it down to a, a degree. <laughs> and then we're going to end it with Say Yeah. I know it's usually in the middle, and most of you guys have already said that, but I think... You could end the set with say yeah with with fire and things like that and then have like a coda at the end type of thing mm. to to bring the the show to a to an end <laughs> so i pledge allegiance we are one and say yeah round out my list yeah rock and roll rebel i'm gonna echo good job lonnie thank you thank you thank you, thank you for the sanity there um <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i i end mine I've already used Hell or Hallelujah, and that seems like such a rhetorical question in this Kiss Alive show that we're doing, because the set will be hell for a lot of fans that we've come up with, and mm. some people might go, Hallelujah, something refreshingly different, um, but I... I I don't think those folks have joined us, so... Um, <laughs> there's another rhetorical kind of song at this stage in the show for me, and it is shout mercy so mm -hmm. our, my final three <laughs> kick off with gene have you had enough do you want more i'm gonna sing it to you shout mercy and and he goes um we're kind of at the bottom of the barrel here but, um, <laughs> you're not kidding i'm i'm I'm, sti I'm sticking with gene and you wanted the best Wow. Oh, oh, really? I thought, I find my weight was bad pick. Wow. No, oh, wow. you wanted that's the best. even worse. I, I think it'd be fun live because yeah, maybe. in my in my rhetorical <laughs> questions here about this set, you wanted the best, but you're shit out of luck, you know. Um, I, think, I think it would be fun, and I'm gonna end my set by cheating because I totally oh. agree 100 with Lonnie. Say yeah. Because uh, it's got it's got that rap in it, but it's going to mm -hmm. segue into the, in the middle into right here, right now. Mm, because I think I that, that song is a great way to. I start knew you would night. pick that one. Well, you know, I think Mark talked about God gave rock and roll to you. It was and me. To me, yeah. Daniel, it was, yeah. Mark, yeah. correct me. Then. Um, because <laughs> I, I get a kind of a similar sentiment. You know, God gave rock and roll to you is asking and celebrating something and right yep. here and right now is celebrating the end of a night together um at a kiss concert where everyone's you know received electric communion so that's why i'm ending with that little cheese because i had to have that in there all right ken you did a a fourth side so yeah tell us about that i did a fourth side kind of like a studio side of a live two so my song <laughs> my songs are <laughs> Uh, songs that were kind of like from the past demos that never really made it to uh, their album. So I put, they're going to finish these songs. And first song on side four is Run To Me, a Paul song. And then followed by a song called Blood and Guts by Gene. And then a third song is Love Makes You Crazy. That's a Paul song. And then fourth song, Dirty Blonde, a Gene song. And then I'm doing a cover, uh, which they tend to do. Oh, they did, actually, right? Um, Alive, too. I did Rock and Roll Party in the Streets, the cover. Gene and Paul trade vocals on it. It's the Axe, you know, the group Axe, their song. They're doing a cover of it. That's how it ends. Interesting. <clears throat> Why not? Why not? Fantasy. And, and Austin makes a good I, comment that it I don't recommend doing it, Austin. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Ouch. 
I've oh, just yeah. muted you. My out. ears are bleeding. Just blew our ears out. They're they're bleeding more from that than they were from listening to these three albums. But it was a good opportunity to go back and think about which of the songs on these albums would have been good live. Um, you know, could they have done, you know, a, a more proper live album? And I think the closest that you get to that is if you go and find that Buenos Aires, what was it, 2012? Mm. Uh, but yeah. it was a pro uh, stream, I think, that's got all those songs from Monster. Um, I can't remember the set list, but it, it was a real, it was pretty uncomfortable with that amount of Kiss songs, even though we bitch about them not doing Kiss songs. And so. Mm. Final final thoughts. Uh, are there any other thoughts that went into your Alive and Kicking and Screaming album, Lonnie? And are you um, going to make a playlist to torture everyone with? No, <laughs> no I'm not. I, uh, I like I said in the beginning. I I struggled. I struggled with this. This was this was harder than I thought it would be. Um, especially those Psycho Circus songs. And and it's you know I was 19 years old when Psycho Circus came out came out i mean it should be like you would think that you would think like because of my age that that album would like resonate with me and like stick with me no matter what because of you know the age and how impressionable you are but i go back and listen to it now and it's it has done the opposite it has not aged well for me whatsoever um it's it's a, it's a hard listen especially the second side especially the second side of that album um is 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 rough but I do, I still enjoy Sonic Boom the most out of these three. And it's probably not even close how much I enjoy Sonic, how much I prefer, I, just, I shouldn't say enjoy, how much I prefer Sonic Boom over the other two. Mm. Um, for whatever reason, yeah. um, Sonic Boom to me sounds the most like a Kiss record, feels the most like a Kiss record, doesn't feel forced like the other two do. Nice. Thank you. Mark, what what about you? And are you sh what what are the shockers from this episode that you haven't delivered His yourself? Own picks. Mark did for the shock. Well, I don't, I don't know my own picks. About this, you know, what does he think was unrealistic from the rest of us? Well, I mean, look, the, the, this whole thing was kind of unrealistic if you think about it. I mean, no, you, you after, after, after it was on the uh, FAQ yeah. for fuck's sake. You, if you if you go and right. one thing that I, that I found very yeah. interesting about doing this is that you kind of realize now why Kiss play the songs that they do play because when you when they go and you know mine the songs through their catalog there are some there's some you know good songs that they've done throughout the years but really as they go later and later into their career there's just less and less good stuff to pick from so they really have to always go back to the early stuff for and i and i know daniel for sure is thinking what are you talking about you know fits like a glove should be on every tour that they play and uh you know and maybe they should you know not that they have tommy and eric and they have no excuse not to play it right but you know there's these yeah well okay there you go but still i mean doing this set list Having done set lists of my own with my own band and having done it, there's there's definitely an art to doing it because there has to be a flow. There has to be a momentum to it. You can lose an audience really quickly if you fuck up a set list in the creation of the flow of it. And yeah, well, I mean, hey, that was in the encore and they've done that through their whole career. Yeah. With with Beth, so if that if that tanks, then I can say I can say that Beth should tank just as equally bad and that mm. sort of thinking, but. The whole point is that they had a system that they do that flows and works to them, and doing it with these three albums is nearly impossible. I thought. All right, Daniel, I apologize for muting your guitar playing. Uh, I think, yeah, I think uh, it was a fun exercise. Uh, um, you had to listen to uh, some of the albums that you don't uh, go to that often. So, uh, but to me, there are maybe three or four songs from these albums that I really appreciate, but those are good. I like Hello Hallelujah, I like Modern Day Delilah, Psycho Circus, Yearning of a Thousand Years. But after that, there's some pretty good, all for the love of rock and roll and uh, all for the glory, pretty good songs. But I feel they are a bit forced, you know. Uh, they're trying to use the Kiss template from 76, but it feels a little bit, you know, 
not honest really they know what the fans want let's give it to them uh it doesn't come really from the heart it's it's more of a business decision but there's a few good songs and i think it was a good exercise and the guy who came up with the idea hats off to that guy pretty cool idea and it was a fun discussion well you you just raise a point i want to ask about quickly you just said that it's a business decision. It feels like a business decision about sets. Would you have seen them adding making love to the set? I didn't know. Because that doesn't seem like a very businessy decision to me. No, no, no. I, I don't understand why they did that. Well, I do know why they added it. Paul wanted to play it, I guess. Paul wanted to play making love. <laughs> exactly. And then he yes. said, we're playing yes. making yes. love. And the rest of the guys said, well, I don't know why, but let's do it. If Gene had said, I want to play, you know, uh, almost human, Paul nope. would just say, nope. So I, I guess it comes from, but it's a good song. It was, it worked pretty good live. Uh, the audience were was into it, um, the two gigs in Sweden. So uh, that was a good addition. All right, Ken, your wrap up. <laughs> or did I get you already? I'm no, 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 no. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I a couple of you guys chose Stand, and I almost chose Stand because I really, actually, mm -hmm. I really like that song a lot. Uh, the only reason I didn't choose it, I thought I was going to get ripped by you guys <laughs> for, 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 for putting it on there. Um, but I think that was a good pick. I probably could have, should have, probably should have put it on my list. But uh, yeah, it was a difficult kind of thing to put these together because you know. What you have when you have a Kiss concert set list, it's it's up. They're all classic Kiss songs, you know, and maybe a few of these became have become classic. I don't know how many will become classic. Uh, maybe more will not. Probably not many more uh, than already. You know, Hell or Hallelujah and Psycho Circus and that sort of stuff. Um, I guess, you know, from that standpoint, it, 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 you know, very difficult. So, but it was fun. It was fun doing it, you know, imaginary kind of set list and, and, you know, what goes on in the concert and that sort of thing. I think fans will eventually warm up a lot more to these final three albums as the years go by because they yeah. were the final three albums from the band that there'll probably be a revisitation of this era uh, not necessarily the live aspect of it but some of the things that the band did during the era um, whether it was Family Jewels you know whether it was the Kissologies whether it was these three studio albums um and and the box sets and because that's all we've really got from from this band in terms of new music it's these three albums and a, and a sprinkling of other things so to be forced to revisit it in this sense is, a, is an interesting proposition am i going to you know keep that playlist on permanently hell no i'll be playing alive to purge my ears pretty darn soon um just because those again are the songs that are the dna uh, and these are not these feel a little bit like viruses in the alive scenario <laughs> uh, yeah lonnie did i get your wrap up you did well then there we are you know i want to thank everyone who's taking the opportunity to join us live today whether it's on facebook or youtube and to chime in with your comments about our insanity and i'm glad that we had some picks that were off the wall because otherwise it would be very very boring and roland rock over thank you for the topic that is very much appreciated but for now from daniel from ken Mark, Lonnie, and myself, thank you for joining us, and we shall see you next time. Thank you for spending time listening to the KISS FAQ podcast today. All sales are final. There are no refunds. If you'd like, look us up on Facebook or come over to the KISS FAQ message board and discuss the topic we've broadcast today. Don't forget to rate us on iTunes, Spreaker, or wherever you've listened to the show. We hope you'll join us again.